Hello there, uh, Carl from Shore. Nick. And uh, today is our uh, second sermon on Advent, and we are talking about uh, Mary as she gets an, a visit from an angel, and the, the title of the message is Young Made Mature. Uh, Nick, uh, explain to people what they might expect or what they might want to have with them as they're watching this. Yeah, yeah. So what we're doing through Advent, we're trying to make our sermons uh, interactive for the whole family, whether you've got young children at home, uh, even teenagers, if they're willing. Um, <laughs> and, you know, or, or if you're an empty nester and don't have any kids at home, there's still things for you to do. Uh, and so what we're looking at today, some materials that you might need, uh, is some tin foil. Uh, an electric fan of some kind, not like a ceiling fan, but uh, one that, you know, is a smaller electric fan. Uh, and then a piece of paper with something to draw on. Uh, and then, you know, a phone with a camera so that you can uh, capture some of the moments that, that you're doing here today. So, Because we enjoyed seeing those on uh, Facebook and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, absolutely. Neat. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. So that's kind of what we're looking at today. Uh, so, yeah, Carl, where are we heading? Okay, so um, I'm going to give you a little background about uh, kingship in, in ancient Israel. Um, the, the question for the Israelites was, well, wh who should be the king? Because at, at the beginning, when Israel became a nation, Yahweh, God, was, was their king. Um, and uh, there was some limited success with that, and eventually the people, uh, they were clamoring uh, to, to Samuel, who was the prophet judge at the time, they were clamoring to him about, hey, we want to be like all the other nations. We want a king just like everybody else. We want someone that we can look to, talk to, see, who will lead us into battle, all, all that kind of stuff. And, and so uh, God ends up uh, relenting and deciding, okay, uh, the people are rejecting me and not rejecting Samuel. And, uh, okay, we'll, we'll give him a king. And that's when um, God has Samuel go out and, and anoint Saul to be the first, the first king. Um, it's not long that, that in that kingship, uh, Saul started disobeying Samuel, who was speaking for God. And so Saul turned out not to be the king that was going to stay there forever. And then eventually... God has Samuel uh, anoint David to be the king after you know, Saul dies. Uh, so we got David and then his son Solomon. And, and during that span, uh, probably you call that the golden age of, of Israel. Uh, they expand in their territory. Uh, mostly they, they are pay, paying attention to God and doing what he wants. Uh, it does get to the point where uh, even for S Solomon, uh, he, he isn't following God after at, toward the end of his life. Okay, so what happens then after, you know, uh, generations of these kings and, uh, and the divided kingdom, you got the north and the south and, and all that. Um, what happens is the, uh, the people have sinned enough that God decides, okay, I'm going to have you be conquered and you go into exile because you're not paying attention to my commands. You're not paying attention to me. You're worshiping false gods and other gods. And, and so that's what happens. So both Israel and Judah, the northern kingdom, the southern kingdom, they, they go into exile. Okay. Um, what, what is unique and, and really neat about the passage today, and, and we'll get to that in a second, God had made a promise to King David that his descendants would be the ones who sit on the throne. And uh, after exile, there really weren't any kings for Israel because they were never an independent nation. But now what's going to happen here, um, an angel is going to come and, and visit Mary and going to tell her that her son is going to be the king. And so... God's got a way of, he was the king in the beginning, then you got all these human kings, and now God's son, Jesus, is going to be the king on, on, on this throne. So our scripture today is, is, comes from Luke 1, uh, starting with verses 26 to 38. And so I encourage you to pull up a Bible. Um, I'm not going to read through all that scripture. I'll, I'll read a piece here or, here or there. It is a familiar story. Um, but I, if you want to follow along in, in your Bible, that's fine. So 
as the scripture starts, we have the same angel who visited Zechariah in, in last week's uh, uh, verses comes and it's Gabriel uh, and his name means warrior of God. He visits a young woman, Mary, and she's probably 15 years old or so. I mean, nobody knows for sure, but um, young girls in that culture, that's when they, they got engaged to be married. Mary is engaged. Uh, she's not married yet. Um, and, and this angel's got a fantastic message for Mary, and it's a very unexpected message. So Gabriel uh, comes and says to her basically this, Greetings, the Lord is with you. Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. You will have a baby, and he will be a king. Um, we want to talk also today about you know, memories of, of, and get you to engage in some memories. And so uh, the memory we want to talk about now is a memory of a time when um, you felt very special, uh, you felt like you're the favorite. Um, and I would have to talk about this. So when I, when I was growing up, my mom was always this big encourager for me. And, and she, she made me feel special. I remember her telling me countless times when I was very young, uh, there is nothing in the world you can't do. You know, you, you are incredibly gifted. You, you can do anything. Okay, and I just remember her saying that time and time again. And then uh, when I started uh, dating Stephanie, and we were very serious with, with each other, but we weren't married yet, I got to meet uh, Stephanie's uh, grandmummy, and, and her name was Fanny. And grandmummy made me feel special. I, I really didn't have a relationship with my own grandparents. And so this was the first grandparent that I actually had a relationship with, it's Stephanie's. And uh, she made me feel special. And, and I do remember um, somewhere in that dating years, uh, we weren't married yet, I, I told Stephanie that, you know, I, I feel like, you know, uh, God's calling me to go into the ministry. Uh, Stephanie cried, by the way, but that's that's not really the point of this of this story. Um, but I, I think you know, that was shared with Fanny, and I remember Fanny. She she was again this big encourager for me, and I remember when Stephanie and I would go and play Scrabble with her and, and visit with her, and Fanny would would uh, talk to me about scriptural matters. She'd bring up a scripture passage, you know, and, and she would just want dialogue with it. And so I, I felt very special, uh, for, for this, for this lady who was, who was a fantastic influence in, in Stephanie's life. And then, and then in my life too. So yeah. yeah. What about you? So for me, uh, definitely one, uh, one instance, but, uh, kind of a series of instances, I guess, though. Um, for a number of years, I had an aunt and uncle who uh, had season tickets to the Colts, uh, Indianapolis Colts, and uh, it seemed about uh, once a year or so, um, they would take my brother and I to a Colts game, and uh, we'd always stop at IHOP on the way there. Uh, we'd go to the game, and you know, they might, you know, I think one year they bought us a jersey, and another year they bought us hats or whatever, and uh, we'd, you know, we'd watch the game, and, um, you know, for many years there, they won every time we were there, yeah, and sure. then they started losing a couple <laughs> times that we were there. Um, but then on the way home, we'd always stop at Golden Corral and eat at Golden Corral. So, you know, just, just the, it's just, you know, just my brother and I, and just, you know, being, uh, you know, taken to something like that was, was just really cool uh, and, and really special for, yeah. for me and for, for him as well. So, uh, what we want you to do. We want you to pause the camera once we're done in explaining here. Uh, and we want you to, uh, along the same lines of, of angels here, we want you to, to grab that tin foil that you have uh, and, and make a tin foil halo. Now, Carl has made an example of a tin foil halo. Uh, so you know, so you right can, here, you kind of stick it back here. You know, tape yeah, that on yeah, your, your yeah, kid's yeah, head yeah, so yeah. that when you <laughs> tear it off, you take half their hair with them. Um, and, you know, so you've got a, you've got a, a halo there. Um, and then, you know, as you're making this or once you're, you're done with it, uh, we want you to, to, to talk about a memory that you have of when you felt special or felt like uh, you were favored by someone. Uh, and maybe your kids have some memories too. Um, 
And then once, once that's all said and done, you snap a picture of, of your halo uh, with your kids wearing it, uh, and you can post that on social media uh, afterwards. So and it doesn't have to be just the kids that wear the halo. Well, I mean, it true. could be some parents out there. That's true. That's, I think there's, yeah. you know, some parents that would look really good in a, in a tinfoil halo yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. So continuing on with our scripture, here is some of the language that the angel uses in telling Mary about this son that she will have. Um, first, the angel makes sure that, that Mary knows, name the child Jesus. Okay, I, I just want to explain that name, and, and I've done this uh, other times, and, and I, I never get tired of talking about this. So Jesus is the Greek form of, of his name. But in the Hebrew, his name is, would be Joshua or Yeshua. They don't pronounce the, the J. But that's just the Hebrew word for salvation. So he, he's, the angel is telling Mary, name your child salvation. And, and to me, that, that's beautiful because that, that's the function that, that Jesus has. All right, so, so na name your child. Uh, his name will be Jesus or salvation. And then also... Um, he will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And then in a little, couple verses later, therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. Okay, so this Jesus will be Son of the Most High, and Son of God, and the rightful king who belongs on David's throne, and his kingdom will never end. It lasts forever. Our next memory, uh, memory of people that, that you have taken instruction from and who have positively influenced your life. Uh, we want you to think about that. So, uh, for me, I, I would, I'd have to share about my dad, and I would have many people who definitely influenced my life positively and, and I've taken instruction from. I, I just often think about my dad um, n because the instruction he gave me um, wasn't just about uh, Bible, which, which he definitely w would have. Um, it wasn't just about how to change oil in a car, which again, he did mm -hmm. that. But it was about having integrity. Um, it was about relying on God for wisdom. I remember I was in, in high school, and, and, and I always had a good relationship with my dad. Uh, sometime I'll share more memories about some of that. Um, but I remember uh, I went and asked him a, a, a question. Uh, my dad was a pastor. We had, he had a study down in the basement, and I remember going down there. He would get up at 5 or 5.30 in the morning, and he would work on his sermon and stuff, and then he, he was bivocational. Then he would work as an accountant in other places. Um, and I remember going down there, and he's in his study, and I asked him a question. I don't remember what it was about, but I remember leaving the room feeling like, wow, my dad's got some wisdom. And, and, and you know, as a high school kid, I didn't know that, you know, but it's like, he did, you know, he's, got, he's got this good wisdom. And I think it was God-given wisdom. Uh, and so, yeah, my, my dad has been a tremendous uh, positive influence on my life. Nick, yeah. what about you? So, uh, obviously, I mean, for me, my parents were... were big influences in my life uh, aside from that um, definitely uh, same uncle that I was talking about earlier um, has been an, a big influence in my life I remember there's been times where I've called him for uh, all sorts of stuff uh, doesn't matter what and, and he just has a has a lot of wisdom to share um, thinking specifically about ministry um, when I was first in ministry uh, there's kind of a, a group of co-workers that had, were what I would say ministry vets. Yeah. Uh, they'd been in ministry for a long time that I really leaned on heavily and would ask them questions about, hey, how would you deal with this situation or how would you uh, approach this or whatever and, and took a lot of instruction and advice from them. Um, and it, and I, it really, really helped me in those first couple years where um, I didn't really know what I was doing <laughs> and, you know, just, uh, was trying to figure out what what ministry was all about, uh, and and they really really helped 
and influence me, me in that. So uh, what we want you to do is uh, pause the video in a second and we want you to get the tin foil back out. Um, and we want you to use that tin foil to make a crown uh, for King Jesus. And Carl has made a crown here. Um, if you can, if you want to call it that. <laughs> if you think you can beat this crown, make it take a picture. I mean, if you, I mean, if you I mean think I'm you, just saying, if, if you, you think you yeah, can. If you think you can, take a picture, post it on social media, and you know we'll take a vote of some kind. Uh, but then we also want you to share a memory of a time uh, or a person that you took instruction from, uh, and it influenced you in a positive way. Um, and. Mm -hmm. You know, just kind of share share with your kids, share with one another. Um, if you're alone, think of somebody to call or, or journal, um, and and you can share in that way. So uh, back to our um, passage. What I what I love about this, God uses the existing plan uh, that a king has to come from David's line of descendants. Okay. Um, in our in our scripture today, we find out that Mary is in, engaged to Joseph, and Joseph is of the line of, of David. Um, so, God uses the existing plan, and and keeps his promise to David for his descendants to be on on the throne. Jesus will be on that throne forever. Mary hears all this news from the angel. And she has to feel overwhelmed. I mean, uh, she's not married yet, mm -hmm. and she's hearing all, all, all this stuff. I mean, it, it, it's got to floor her. And so she asks the question, well, how can this be? Since I'm, and I'm not married yet, I mean, she uses, I'm, not a, I, I'm still a virgin. You know, how is this supposed to happen? Mary knows that this can't happen just on its own. I mean, unless something special happens, unless God does something special, mm -hmm. none of this is going to take place. Mary can't make all this happen on her own. And then the angel answers her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. Okay, so God's Holy Spirit, His own Spirit, will make this happen. The Holy Spirit will come upon Mary. The power of the Most High will overshadow her and the child will be called holy. Our third memory for today, a memory of a time when you knew something was way too much for you, uh, that, that you couldn't do it on your own. You, you needed help in order for this to happen. You know, uh, maybe you felt totally overwhelmed or you're just not prepared or you're in over your head. Um, I'm gonna share a, a story from, but be about 25 years ago. Um, there was uh, stress uh, that, that was happening, um, and my body, I mean, I wasn't understanding the stress I was under. Um, matter of fact, I was denying I was under stress, but my body uh, was betraying me because the body knows when it's under stress, even when your mind is trying to deny it. And I got to the point where uh, I just felt so miserable, and I wasn't sure how I was going to continue doing what I was doing, and I began wondering, well, am I going to be able to continue being a pastor? Or am I going to have to quit that and do something else? I mean, I just, I wasn't sure how to handle the stress. I wasn't sure how to get through it. And it was a very desperate time when, I mean, I spent all that year in, years in school. And then I'd been a pastor for several years already. And now I'm thinking, am I going to be able to continue this or not? Um, and, and I mean, I... I, I <laughs> I spent a lot of time in prayer just trying to, to figure that out. You know, Stephanie and I talked quite a bit. I ended up, you know, talking to some other people. And, and, and God saw me through that. But that makes me realize, you know, man, uh, when those times of being overwhelmed are there and you realize, I can't continue this on my own unless I get some help from, from God. So that, that's, a, that's a memory I've got. Nick? Yeah. So this, the, uh, a memory that I have, it's actually, you know, kind of a, ongoing process of, um, you know, so since Michelle and I have been married, we have moved one, two, three, four times, I think, <laughs> um, four times. And 
each time we move, if you've ever moved, you have that overwhelming feeling of, holy moly, how <laughs> are we going to yeah. move all of yeah. this stuff? Yeah. 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 Uh, you know, and so each time that we've moved, we have heavily relied on other people to help us, whether it's family and friends. Uh, you know, and, and I remember specifically the last move that we made from where we're at to where we are now, um, kind of having that overwhelming feeling of, you know, we've got, we have more stuff now than we ever have had before because we we were owning a house, so we had, you know, lawn equipment and gardening yeah. equipment and all that stuff that we didn't have before. Uh, and so I remember talking to Gary Miller at the time and he said, we'll, we'll take care of it. We'll, yeah. we'll, you know, and if you know yeah. Gary, you know, yeah. I mean, he just, he <laughs> made, he made stuff happen. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And so, you know, a couple of days later he texts me and said, you know, we've got three trailers with a crew in each, in each truck. And, you know, we're going to, we're going to come get That's you and, and, you know, bring you here. And um, so just, you know, that idea of, overwhelmed with how are we going to do all this and you know having many people That's step good. in and and you know help through that so um what we want you to do is uh we want you to get that electric fan out now i've got a i've got an electric fan here uh just a, a smaller one that that will work uh for you to that's to kind go. of a toy compared to the fan i got so, i mean i got the big one here you know you know yeah, yeah, Carl yeah, always yeah. has to one up me. <laughs> Got to be a little bigger, you know. So I'm sorry. <laughs> so I want you to take this electric fan, and um, and when you hold this electric fan in front of your face, um, you feel the wind and the air moving past your face. But when you're looking at it, you you can't see the air moving, right? The the air is see through. You can't see it moving, uh, but you can feel the effects of it. It you know your hair might be blowing or your face might get chilly. You can feel the effects of it, and the same goes with with the Holy Spirit. You can feel the effects of the Holy Spirit. You can't necessarily see physically, tangibly see the Spirit, but you can see the effects of the Spirit. You can see the fruit of the Spirit: love, joy, peace, patience, kindness goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Um, you can see the effects of the Holy Spirit, but you can't necessarily tangibly see it. And so um, take a picture of you or your kids standing in front of the fan, you know, feeling the effects of, of the air moving as you are reflecting on uh, the Holy Spirit moving. Uh, and then also we want you to, to share a memory or a time uh, when you knew something needed to be done, but you were totally overwhelmed and you knew you needed uh, whether it was somebody else's help or God's help uh, getting through that situation. So I, I think the angel knew that Mary was feeling a little overwhelmed uh, because the Mary, angel wants to encourage Mary now that things will work out. So the angel tells her about her relative, Elizabeth, um, who was old and barren, but now is, is pregnant. And she says, and, and the angel says, and behold, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month with her who is called barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. God can do anything. Like having a, an old barren couple be pregnant, like having a young girl who's still a virgin give birth to the King and the Savior of the world. So Mary is moving, willing to move ahead in faith. I mean, her response after hearing all this incredible news, uh, and some of it's like, well, how in the world is it going to happen? She says, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. So the, the final memory share would be one of, of a time when you have moved ahead on faith, where maybe you didn't have all the answers, you weren't sure how it was all going to work out, but you realized, you know what? God's got this. I, I just want to move ahead. Uh, well, what I would share about that was uh, when I was uh, 26 years old, out of seminary, uh, we had two small children, and uh, felt called to, to pastor, and we answered a call to go out and live in Illinois. 
we didn't realize, I mean, this is, this is where Fanny that I talked about earlier, this is where she was born. Uh, she wasn't living there at, you know, when, when we knew her. Um, but, uh, you know, turns out the three-fourths of the congregation was related to Stephanie. <laughs> um, and and, and we, it, it was a great move and a great time for us, but it took a lot of faith to, to, to go out there and not really know how it was all going to work out. After six and a half years, we really felt called to come back to Indiana. And um, we made that move and without me having a job. Stephanie had, had a job, so we decided we're going to move. So again, just that moving ahead and realizing we feel like this is the plan. We don't know all the ins and outs of the plan, but we want to be able to go ahead and, and follow that plan. And, and so we did. Yeah. How about yeah. you, Nick? So for me, mine, mine, we have to back up to freshman year of college. Um, so freshman year of college, I went into uh, college with a pre-med major um, with the intention of going on to be a doctor. Um, and did that for a semester. Uh, and then kind of in that second semester at the beginning, uh, I, I really felt that God was calling me to go into ministry uh, and to follow what he wanted to do, not what I thought I wanted to do. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that was a really, really hard time for me because that wasn't what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and I fought it and I fought it. And, you know, I, I thought of every excuse I could not to do it. I even uh, went to the, the university. They, they offered a, a life coach you know, program or whatever, where you sit down with, with somebody and they, you know, talk through situations with you and whatnot. And so, so I did that and, and was met with uh, a lady for, I don't know, four or five sessions and, and talk through, you know, uh, strengths and weaknesses and, you know, likes and dislikes. And, you know, fi I think it was like the, the fourth or last session we were together. She's like, you know what you have to do. <laughs> what what's holding you back? I mean, she was pretty candid with me at that point. It's like you know what you're supposed to do. You're just not doing it. Yeah. Um, and that was kind of the one of the last straws. You know, that's like okay, finally, you know. And so so kind of took that that leap of faith, I guess you could say. You know, changed my major to ministry, uh, and you know, had no idea what that was going to look like. You know. What does it even mean to be a pastor? <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, and so, so kind of, you know, went in that direction. But that was definitely, That's definitely a, a leap of faith uh, or a, a moving forward in faith for me. Uh, so, what, what we want, what we want you to do, uh, pause the video here in a second and get that piece of paper and that that drawing uh, utensil out, whatever that is. And we want you to draw a picture of Mary, who is a young girl. Uh, and then we want you to draw. Uh, draw a picture of Mary uh, visiting Elizabeth, who is an old pregnant lady, um, <laughs> right? And so uh, you've got this, this young girl visiting an old pregnant lady. Uh, and then once you have that drawn, snap a picture of it. Uh, you've got several pictures at this point. We'd love for you to, to post those on social media or put them in the comments uh, of the sermon here uh, when it's on social media. Love to see those. Um, but then also share a memory of a time where you had to move forward in faith. Uh, and I'll just, I'll just throw this out here. Parents, this is a, a great time for you to share things in your life with your kids um, about your faith journey. Um, things, you know, sometimes uh, kids don't think that parents ever go through hard times or go through, um, you know, having to, to make hard decisions. And so this is a great time for you to share a time where you had to move forward in faith where you didn't know what was gonna happen. So really encourage you to, to think about this one uh, and share something really meaningful uh, with your kids on, on this. So back to our scripture, the angel makes sure to tell Mary that nothing will be impossible with God. Mary doesn't have to do anything on her own. She just has to be willing to be part of God's plan. God's going to do all the heavy lifting, but he needs willing people to go along. This is, that's for us today. 
We don't need to have all the answers to life's difficulties. We just have to trust that God has the answers. And we just have to be willing to step out in faith and follow what God has for each of us. Be encouraged in this Christmas season that God has a plan. And God has a plan for the world. God has a plan for your life. And God will implement that plan. We need to listen and obey and have faith. Please bow with me in prayer. Lord God, I want to thank you for the opportunity we have during this Christmas season just to, to recognize the people who have been part of your plan, the people who have gone before us, uh, Mary, but also, you know, our grandparents, our parents, ourselves. Help us to be able to pass that along to others on how to listen to your voice, how to do the things that you would have us do, and what it means to step out in faith. Just ask for your blessing, and we pray all this in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Go in peace.